Alright. Dynamite the light. Alright. Ten days before World's End, we get this show. And I will tell you, they tried to pack a good amount of stuff into the show to make it feel important. Did it work? Um, don't know. I can't tell you yes or no, but we do have a couple of things that are interesting. A couple of repeats, well, one repeat of something, which is surprising. Gold League, first match, it was Roosh versus, <coughs> excuse me, Swerve Strickland. Now... I gotta tell you this. Did I expect Roosh to lose? Yes. I'm gonna say it right now. There is no way they're gonna let Roosh win this. We're too close to World's End. It would make no sense for Strickland to lose. But here's the thing. They tried to make sure Roosh, even if he does not win, stay as strong as possible. But I gotta say this. The question with Roosh is, you just... Tried to make Roosh look really good because he's supposed to have a left quad injury. I believe it was his left quad. Yeah, his left quad. And Swerve his right shoulder. They focused on each other's most weakest point. Swerve's right shoulder and Roosh's left quad. That was the focus of this match while the tournament was going on. And they're trying to say Roosh needs these points. Strickland has nine points. Roosh has six points. Both of them must have something. If Roosh wins, he gets 9 points. He could tie with Strickland and they can try and do something with that. Strickland needed 12 points to just go straight into the semifinals so he could have his moment for next week before Worlds End. But the thing that gets me is that is this really going to help Roosh in the long run? Because as much as they tried to make Roosh look strong here, and there were a few moves Roosh did on Strickland like that... I'm... I'm I never like when they do the ring skirt, guys. You got the ring ropes here. Here's the skirt. It's not that long. I think it's a little longer than it should be on AEW TV. They make it a little bit longer so you can have more space there. So when you do your your when you do your spots, it doesn't get too dangerous because the way the rings used to be, the ropes didn't used to be this far away. They used to be this close, and you would have just enough room for your toes. On those mats. And a lot of times when people did those spots. They were incredibly dangerous. You could easily shatter your neck. Because now that they extended a little bit. That's what I believe. Because you can see that there's more space for these guys to land on. Because if you've seen it traditionally. It used to be like this. Not like this. You got more room for the person to land on. But seeing Swerve take a hit really hard. On here and here at the same time. At the edge of that skirt, it makes me nervous. Because that's how people can lose feeling in the arms, legs, and then go completely paralyzed. It's not good to see the way he landed. It was nasty. It was like this. Like, here's the ring edge. He could have landed almost like this. But it was om it was mainly like this. But it felt like it could have been like this. Like this on an angle. That makes me nervous. At least that's how it looked to me. You guys, some me below didn't look like... It was on an angle like this with the way he landed because he was coming down sideways and it was like he was landing here, not flat here. That's how it looked to me. But knowing how Roosh is, he's not in any major storylines. He's in a faction, but the faction's not really doing anything. And you're making Roosh look as strong as possible. Now, there's nothing wrong with that spotlighting him, but then... Does this mean it's going to have anything in 2024? I don't think so. So I can understand they had to push him as hard as they can to make the tournament look good. But maybe that was a little too much. Because now we're going to expect them to do something with Rouge 2024. And if it doesn't happen, it's going to be like a waste of time. Next match, we got Jay Lethal versus Mark Briscoe. They're both out. Neither one of them got points. So whoever gets points here, which is only going to be three points, it's more about just... Showing that they can get some points at all. Now, I think this was my favorite match. Because when you see Jay and you saw Mark, they were going all out. It was not 
about trying to win the tournament anymore. It was just trying to show they can do something. And since they know each other so well, look, Jay and Mark have known each other since all H. That's how long they've known each other. They've known each other for a long time. They know how each other work. They've already done a match before, which was a good match. So we know we're going to get a good amount out of it. It became a, well, let me give it to you like this. When you saw Jay go into the corner like this, and he's going, come on, chop me. And he say, oh, yeah, right. And Jay had to walk up to Mark, shove his face, do a, a, a pie face, and say, slap the shit out of me. And I, I will say the camera work was good when they focus on Mark. And he's going, oh, okay. You want snack? That's what you get. And that's what they did for most of that match. They were extremely aggressive. Now, they both just wanted to prove they could have won the entire tournament between each other. But here's the thing. Mark and him had a great match. And it was... Who won? Mark. What's it? I forgot who it was. Um... I, yeah, it was Jay. He got three points. Mark did not get any points. It was Jay. But the point here is what now for Jay Lethal? What now for Mark Briscoe? Mark is so over with the fans. I wouldn't expect them to try and do something with him other than leave him as a body. Guys, he's basically a body for the damn tournament. Now, as I said before, and I'm going to keep saying this as long as Mark is there, whenever we just see him do nothing. Mark can't leave AEW because of his family. He needs money for his nieces. They have not recovered from their near-death experience with their father who did pass away. Remember, both his daughters got it bad. Their internal organs are a mess when they first had it in January. And now being in December, I doubt they're fully recovered yet. They probably still need medicine. They need physical therapy. They need money. They'll need money. Especially if they got to do more surgeries and doctor visits. It, they, he can't leave. But still, it does upset me to know they could be doing more with Jay. Yes, he's going to get money for his merch. He's going to get money for appearances. But I really want more for him. That's just me. You guys tell me below. Now, Riho versus Soraya. Number one contendership that I don't know why they didn't. Look. Was my Texas Tony Storm there? Yes. Was Luther there? Yes. Was she going... That look of... That pouty look. That that posh look. If, you, if you've never seen old movies... Where that's where she's getting her look from. Where they give you that posh look. Like... I don't even know if I sound British or not. I don't. But give that posh. Like... Hmm. Maybe I should be wearing the... The larger pearl bre uh, bre no, the larger pearls during this banquet. Or should I wear the much, much larger pearls? What do you think, Trent? And she's talking to a damn dog. And her, her servant's right near her that she's paying. And their servant's like, oh my gosh, this woman thinks she's so posh. What the fuck? Like that. That is my tasteless Tony Storm. That's my girl. She's playing her part so well in black and white. But I don't get this match. Guys, what the fuck? What was Soraya doing? Look, I will say this. I'll say it again. I don't know if Soraya was hurt. Maybe she wasn't. I don't know if Soraya had gotten sick. Probably she wasn't. Maybe she was just sitting in the back and it had nothing for her to do. Maybe she was working on RHTV, which makes no sense. She should be on the main two shows of Collision or... Or, or Dynamite. And sh if she was on all HTV. What was the point? You bring in Soraya. And if she hasn't been hurt. She didn't have any problems with the courts. With the police. Like Liv Morgan. Who I've already made a video. And I'm saying it again. I made three videos. I'm going to release the Selena Deeps videos tomorrow. If I don't. I still got to go to my physical therapy and stuff. And I think I got some stuff to tell you after this. But. What is she doing? If she wasn't injured, she wasn't problematic with court or any type of problems with Tony. Where has she been all these weeks? If she's been nowhere, it's stupid. She should be the one to go after a Tony Storm. 
because she is broken away from the outcast. It should be about them. But no, they throw Riho into it. And look, I'm not against Riho. It's not Riho's fault. This is not, this is not Riho's, not Riho. Riho's fault. It is not her fault. It's not. It's just terrible booking. What do we get with Riho? I know Riho could probably hold a freaking character. Even if she's got to speak Japanese, why don't they do any backstage segments with this woman? Why don't they do any any commentary for this woman? Nothing. She just comes out, do a match, waves, looks cute, and that's it. She deserves better than this. I am sick of this. Impact is the only show that has real women's character. And I'm saying that a lot from what people would say, dude, you're forgetting about damage control. Dude, what are you, what are you talking about? We got something with Bianca Belair. Like what? Nothing. The only one that got anything is Bailey. And I've heard the rumors when it comes to Sasha. And I did a video on that. Done a video. You will hear it in a few days. But I'm telling you, this makes no sense. None. And then what did we get? We get a Tony Storm going into the ring. Facing her. Getting her face beaten in. And Marsh. What is it? Um... Marsha um, May, Marsha May nails Riho in the head with a title. And now my taste of Tony Storm notices this woman like, oh, who is this thing? And she's like, I've never seen you before. And she's been standing by her side and she didn't pay no attention. She's oblivious to her. But then she goes to the crowd and say, do you see, the, did you see this person? And they say, yes, we've seen her. I said, oh, my goodness, clenching her her be, her her pearls. Uh, maybe I should pay attention to this little tot. She is sticking her tits out and her her chin up, her tits out. I'm beginning to like her, even though you've seen her for a while. <laughs> That's the way it is. Next, Roderick Strong versus Commander. This was the worst match for me personally. I'm sure everyone else saying this was a good match. There was a lot of high spots, particularly how Roderick Strong, when he looked like he was going to do basically a, a suplex, he threw Commander into the air, and then as Commander did a, a flip, he lands him on his knees, and he's done. I'm not going to tell you that Commander didn't do some very interesting spots, but I'm not going to lie to you. Commander looked sloppy. Not Roderick. Roderick tried to sell whatever Commander was doing. But Commander was sloppy. I don't know if if JD's gonna see it or did see it or or Jesse's gonna see it. But if you watch yourself, you will see several instances when Commander was supposed to drop toe hold. He wasn't even near Roderick, and he had to try and sell it. That shows that as a luchador, Commander needs more better training because. He's not better than Ray Phoenix, who's supposedly out because he got injured. He's not better than Gravity. I've seen Gravity. He's be Gravity's better than him. He's not better than Penta. Nope. He's just not better than Roosh. He's not better than Andrade. He needs more work. He's sloppy. Doesn't mean he can't do some really interesting moves. But he is sloppy. I don't care what anybody says. He's not better than the former Callisto, the um, Samurai del Sol. Excuse me. He's not better than him. He's not. He is sloppy. And I'm worried because when wrestlers like that are so keen on doing their spots as high flying and as special as possible and they're not trying to be neat about it, I'm telling you right now, someone gets hurt and someone gets hurt bad. There is no way around it. But that's just me. Now, what did we get from the backstage segments? One, Chris Jericho leads a message. He says, one, to Tony Schiavone, read it. And, re and Tony has to read it saying, and it's written there, Tony, if you don't read this correctly, I'm going to smack the yellow off your teeth. Very nice. Ugh. Next, he says he will address everyone in collision about, well, he's going to address the Adam Copeland wanting another match against him. 
That's what he said. So we will be seeing him Saturday before World End. Now, um, what did we get with Rocky Romero? I can't believe I'm about to mess up Rocky Romero. I, I think the reason I just messed up Rocky Romero. You see, I'm botching here. Rocky Romero. The reason I'm botching his name is because what was that? You got all four of them talking with Renee. You got Chris Statlander. You got Orange Cassidy. You got Rocky. And you got, um, I, I can't believe Chuck is hurt. Chuck is out. He's hurt. So it's only Trent. So, yeah, Orange won his match against um, Keith. Um, no, what is it again? Um, Brian Keith, he did win. Statlander won the street fight with a Willow who cut herself pretty deep. And then Rocky just lost his title. He lost the title, I think, in New Japan Post Strong. He just lost his title. But now he says, before 2024 starts, I want gold. So now, a Orange said, okay, you want some gold? Next week, me and you. And then one's patting Rocky on the chest saying, hey, you're getting your title. He's going like, what? I wasn't saying now. That's the look he gave. What? What? what why? Why did it have to be so cringy? I don't know if it needed to be like that. He could have just asked his friend for a match and would have had it. Why did they do it this way? I mean, most people say, yeah, this is just how they work. But for me, no, it just didn't feel right. Next, we got, ah, D. Warlow. I got to say this. Warlow is menacing. Warlow is angry. Warlow... He wants MJF's head on a platter. I do not believe anyone's thought about Warlow being the, the, the devil. I don't think he would be. It would make no sense for him to be the devil. But you could say Warlow makes the best sense because no one's really thinking about Warlow. No one cares. Everyone knows that Warlow's coming for MJF. What happened if he's part of the devil? Devil group, I'm just saying. Next. We get, hmm, should I say this? Because it feels like a repeat, but I have to. MGF has now been inducted into the shoot. It, you guys tell me below if the footage they showed for MGF entering the Jewish Athlete Hall of Fame looked like they did that months ago. Tell me if you, you didn't notice it. Tell me you didn't notice that a lot of what they just showed look like a repeat of what they did months ago when he was just became champion and he went home and they recognized him and I think he even got the key to the city and that looks somewhat like the footage they did. Now, I'm not saying they didn't do anti-Semitism then too and I'm not saying you shouldn't talk about anti-Semitism. I've known Jewish people my entire life. Most of my life, I've met people from Israel. I've known Jewish people and I'm not against them. But we're talking about pro wrestling here. And if he was going into the Hall of Fame, wouldn't it make sense to use new footage? Because that looked like old footage for when he was recognized the last time months ago. It could be me. You guys tell me below. If that was months ago or a year ago, that looks like the same damn footage that they had months ago. Not saying he's not in the Hall of Fame now. But it's like, well, we don't want to refilm it. And it was in Long Island. The footage we got there is practically uh, most of the people that would be there anyway. So let's use it. That's the way it looked to me. Now, if I'm wrong, fine. It's not the same footage. It's different footage. But you guys tell me below. Did it look like the same footage that MJF had when he went to Long Island the last time? And not only did he, I believe he got the key to the city, I believe. He also was honored with several awards, and I'm not saying he wasn't inducted into the Hall of Fame now. It just feels like we're looking at the same footage. You guys some below. Now, the Joe segment when he calls out MGF. Was it good? Yeah. It was not bad at all. I didn't have a problem with it. Did it go to the point? Because Joe said clearly, it's very interesting. Even though Roderick Strong is, a, is basically a tool... He said it. 
he did say he brought up some interesting points where everyone has been laid out, but we don't see anything happen to MGF except a bottle on the floor and MGF sprawled out. And then MGF comes out and tries to belittle Joe and makes it very clear. You trying to disrespect me and my triple B? Why am I waiting for World's End? Let's just go at it right now. And the moment that happens, when he pie-faced Joe, we get not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, maybe up to ten guys in black running out. The lights go out, come back on, fighting them, and then we get a cryptic information about the RH titles. What? 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 The OH titles. They want the OH titles. So next week, and MGF says to Joe, look, me and you, I know we ain't good. I, I, you don't like me and I don't like you. But I promise my best friend, I'm going to do this. And then Joe grabs the mic and holds it in his hand and he says, you're on. You're on. So now Joe and, and MGF are going to have a match next week to try and defend the OH titles. And I know I'm glazing over what Joe was said by, by what, what we got. No show Joe. No show Joe. Yes, I know I'm leaving that out until I just said it right now. But I'm going to tell you this. Is this a good storyline? Yes, it is. Is this the best storyline in AEW? At this moment, that's the best they've been able to build up to. So you may not like it, but it is a good storyline. It may not be the strongest, but what you got. Let's see. Am I forgetting anything else? Um, I think that's it. Final match. Oh, no, no. Almost forgot. That'll be last. I'll say what happened with Swerve and, 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 and MJF after this match. The final match they had tonight. All three were Gold League, I believe. Jay White versus Mox. Now, I was wondering if Mox was going to job here. Because... We already knew that Jay White was not in a good mood. He was frustrated because his direction for his creative was not happy. He was not happy with the creative direction. I just said that backwards. Direction with the creative. <laughs> this is what you get when you're dyslexic. But you get my point. So I felt that either they were going to just end him right now. Or they're going to push him to go into the semifinals. To go up. And see what he's going to be able to do. So we get this match. And... Essentially, just like what happened with Jay and, and Mark Briscoe, where a chair was being thrown back and forth. I know I didn't say it earlier, but the story was more about them wanting to prove how determined they were. More than just the, than, than the chair being thrown in and out and everyone was calling for the chair. Even though it's funny. It was funny. Here, Jay White tricked the ref, throwing one of the chairs into the ring. So he had another chair and nails a Moxley in the back of his right, right knee when he already nailed him earlier with that in the knee. So what we get right here is him doing whatever it takes to win, which it worked. Jay won the match. Now he has 12 points. Moxley has 12 points. Swerve Strickland has 12 points. So now, having this, they still got to wait to see who's going to be in the Blue League. The question's going to be, how far are they going to push Jay White? That's, that's a big question. How far is he going to go? Because sooner or later, he's going to, they're going to have to make a decision with him. Because I'm going to be honest here. I like Jay White. But did I believe he belonged in the main event with, with MGF? No. I'm sorry. Jay White did not feel legitimate. Jay White feels like he was a stopover because they couldn't do what they really wanted, which probably was CM Punk. That's what I think was supposed to happen. MGF, CM Punk, unifying the titles, possibly. Or, at least, champion versus champion. That's the way it was going to go. That's where I think World's End was eventually supposed to be. Well, before that, when it came to All, in, All Out. But you know what I mean. That, that, the show, All In, that show, that is where I think MGF was supposed to be. Not, not here. But with CM Punk. It just didn't happen. Now... This is where it gets interesting. Where are they going with Strickland? I think that might be the title. Because 
we had one segment before the final match. Strickland with the mogul affiliates in and off in a room. Then you see MGF and talking to Prince Nana. And he has a mask. He said, what the fuck is this? And then Swerve comes out and says, don't mess with my, my stuff, my property. And he says, you know, that's kind of funny you, you messing with that. You know, this is interesting because me and you, people don't know this. We have a very long history together when we used to ride together. So Swerve rode with MGF many years ago. Very interesting. Supposedly they didn't know each other. And Swerve saying that he's now a man. And MGF, and he's saying, you're, you're no longer a little white bitch, technically. Not white Jew bitch, but white bitch. I wish they wouldn't go there, but stereotypes are still in pro wrestling when it comes to white people, black people, Asian. I'm sorry. But he tries to make it clear that he was once a bitch, but he's okay. But MGF says, I'm proud of you. Look how far you've gotten. But I have purposely been avoiding you. And, and, and Swerve says, you know, you've been avoiding me. And MGF said, yeah, I've been avoiding you because you've not been on my level. No matter how much you've done it, not until now did you seem to be interesting. But your music is not on and you're not much. And he made it very clear. If you're the one who's the devil, you know I'm coming for you. And Strickland says <laughs> with his gold teeth that MGF said that you should take that shit out. Which everyone heard and everyone going, oh, which is true. <laughs> you said it. But he said simply, when time comes... You're going to be seeing me. That's basically what it comes down to. Not taking away from when Joe puts his hand on MJF because he was ready to go. And he says, no, me and my friend got somewhere to go. My non-friend, my associate, not my friend, my associate has somewhere to go. Because Joe is a friend by affiliation when it comes to Roderick Strom and his segment. I'm not saying it. I don't need to. You already know. He says he's the devil. So. What do we got here? We got an interesting dynamic. Many please, ma ma not many please. I think I'm botching here because you wonder, are they going there with Swerve Strickland? Are they going to really push him far enough that he will be in the main title even if he doesn't have the title itself? Because technically speaking, what MJF said was right, that he was focused heavily on Adam Adam, Adam Page. And that got him where he needed to go. And anybody who says he was already a star beforehand, bullshit. Sorry. Bullshit. He might have been a star in your eyes, but in WWE, they didn't do shit with him. And when he came to AEW, he didn't get anywhere without Hangman Page. He didn't get nowhere. Even after destroying a Keith Lee with cinder blocks, he was not there. Until he had to have the feud with Hangman Page. That's just the deal. And now the question is. Here's the main title scene. You got MJF, Moxley. And a couple of others. Swerve was here. Will they bring him here? Because if Swerve comes here. At least we got more people in the title picture. That we badly need. And maybe. Excuse me. Maybe. Because of how bad Collision is. When they say whose house, Swerve's house, maybe, just maybe, we may just get Swerve's house being Collision. I don't know if they're going to go there. This is, what, this is just me and my speculation. Guys, what do they need right now? They need someone on Collision to guide it badly. They need something. And I'm not saying Swerve is the most strongest talent right now. But if they put him over heavy enough, do something with him heavy enough, maybe, just maybe, if they decide to switch Swerve from being on Dynamite to Collision exclusively and only see him on pay-per-view, and only in special occasions he'd end up on Dynamite, but he stays on Collision, not because they're trying to separate him, but to give him his own show. We need someone there. Adam Copeland, he's not it. Christian, he's not it. MJF is going between both shows. He's not it. They need to have one person exclusive focus on him and make him look 
freaking monstrous. You tell me if I'm wrong. If Swerve gets over enough, give him the show that CM Punk was supposed to have because they need to do something with Collision. Something. And I'm not wanting to see him get buried in Collision. I want to see him get over. But they need to do something. But it's just me. Peace.